I had expected Daenerys to maybe take some of the ships from Yunkai and Astapor, but now that the Greyjoy fleet has arrived, it looks like she won't need them. I guess we're to assume that killing the two slave masters and leaving the subordinate one alive so he can go back to his town and tell everyone what Daenerys is all about was Tyrion's idea. I figure they're hoping that he'll tell everyone back home a story that will embolden the slaves and terrify the slave masters. That does seem a bit more strategic than just burning the cities to the ground. And I didn't want to spoil it in the last video I made, but the rumor that Cersei asked Kyburn about was pretty fully explained by Tyrion to Daenerys. Ares put a bunch of wildfire under King's Landing with the intention of blowing the whole town up. Hopefully they'll be able to use that shit against the White Walkers. I thought the dialogue between Asha slash Yara and Daenerys was a little cheesy. Tyrion seemed understandably untrusting of Theon, but Theon is so cowed at this point that Yara is a much bigger potential threat. I believe this mainly because Yara seemed to agree to giving up piracy way too easily. I doubt she'll keep those promises. I do hope that she and Daenerys get married, though. Tyrion made a good point about what to do if the other kingdoms start to try to get independence. If the Iron Islands are getting independence, Dorne will definitely want it at least. Will they be allowed to leave peacefully, or will they go to war with one another over that? Can you imagine the kind of shit that is going through Davos's head right now? How could he manage to keep his head in the game during the battle while having a pretty good idea of what Melisandre did to Shireen? Some bad shit is going to hit the fan in the next episode. I love that they allowed Lyanna Mormont to hang around during the parley with Ramsay. When Ramsay said that he hadn't fed his dogs in seven days, if I had been Jon Snow, I would have been like, yeah, well, I haven't fed my thens in seven days. Given the quick cuts in the editing of the battle scenes, it wasn't entirely clear what was going on, but it looked like when the first soldiers of Ramsay's army advanced, he ordered the archers to shoot at them to create a big pile of dead bodies they used to fence in the wildlings. It seemed a little far-fetched that all these bodies would die on top of each other in a big pile, but I've heard there's historical precedent for that. It also seemed odd to me that one one couldn't just kick a big hole in that row of shields and spears that would allow everyone to escape. Then they did this cliched thing with the Aarons and their soldiers riding over the hill at the last minute. I'm starting to sound like I didn't like this episode, but I did. These are minor quibbles. When they just plowed right through Ramsay's men, Sansa had this look in her face like she was really clever and in control of the situation. But so did Littlefinger, and I think Littlefinger's smirk was a little bit more justified. Sansa thinks she knows how this whole game is played now, but she's way too dependent on Littlefinger. In the preview for next week's episode, Jon Snow says something like, we have to trust each other. I think this indicates that Peter Baelish is successfully driving a wedge between Sansa and Jon. If Sansa is letting him get between her and Jon, she hasn't learned nearly as much as she thinks she has. 